talk about things we know nothing about uh i'm chris jazz sequence on the internet I'm i think we already did that talk by, about things we know nothing about i'm joined the earth and by two lovely human beings uh, underpinnings of florida gary is a human being who lives in florida L-L-O. <laughs> he lives uh he lives in florida on on a on a pile of jello and he is binary Gary on the internet. And uh, Allison is Allison Plus on the internet. She lives in Canada, uh, which is not based on built on Jello. And she uh, and she yeah is, is Allison Plus on the internet. And she comes to us with topics typically. Last week we had a bit of an off week or an odd week or an even week maybe, um, in which I came with a topic just ready to go. And we did that one instead, and that threw the entire show off. So this <laughs> week, we're going to... From what I said, it was fine. <laughs> I still had no idea what was going on. <laughs> this that week, we're going to go back to the basics and let Allison bring the topics, because that's the way the show is supposed to work. Unless we just throw it on its ear again, and someone For comes up with a, a topic that nobody knows anything, and none of us know anything about. <sighs> No, my topic for this week is something that came up multiple times for me until the point where I was like, I guess I should look this up and learn what it is. Yes. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> everybody keeps going? referencing. And I keep nodding, going, hmm, yeah. Oh, boy. Wait, if everybody's referencing it, it's going to be super embarrassing when we have no idea what it is. No, like everybody being like, yeah. Just, I mean, a, a smattering, but like two or three people were enough where, when you know when you haven't heard of it, yeah. something ever. Sounds what is that phenomenon weird. called? There's a word for that. Huli Jing. You like, I don't think that's it. I think that's a holiday. That's a holiday. But I know it's in China now and not India, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's an eight-tailed fox. Nine. Right? So close. You're one off. I think I thought eight because eight is such a lucky number. It's weird that nine would be the number of tails because nine is like the number of death or something. So it's not something you commonly use in folklore in China. Anyway, nine is the topic. number of death. Let's we have oh. to rewind that. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Maybe someone should Google that. It might be six. I don't know. I I guess I still get sixes and nines confused, apparently. <laughs> like it's fourth grade. Um no, um there is one number that like you would like you would not want in your phone number. So people will like pay for phone numbers that don't have that number in them. And they will pay extra for phone numbers that have a lot of eights because eight's lucky. I think that's accurate. I don't know if it's in, I don't I don't know if it's in China. It, totally but it, it might it might be. It might be. I only know this because of a song by Morphine. Um I thought you said the bare naked ladies. No, by Morphine. They reference uh, the song as well. They uh they have a song called Thirteenth Floor. Uh, check it out. Okay. <laughs> um, right now? I'm not necessarily. Um, but I believe, can't afford the rights. But they talk time. about they talk about how there's how <laughs> the, how the chorus is the elevator. There's no on the elevator. There's no thirteenth floor. And so he talks about other numbers in the yeah. that have specific, special significance. And the number nine makes an appearance. So yeah. The numerology in China is is fun. Like eight is a big deal. Like that's the floor you want your company headquartered on. You would pay extra. Do either of you have numbers that pop up for you all the time in your personal life? Fifty-three. Lives? Fifty-three. Really? Oh, that's really. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know why. Yep. Yep. Well, now. Now that makes me want to find out what fifty-three is in my uh, I Ching-based Dao Oracle. 53, because I, I feel like most people, like, I have, like, like twos pop up a lot for me. Yeah. But I feel like most people have, like, a single digit rather than, like, 53. <laughs> it, like, it, it just feels, like, more specific somehow. 53 is development. 
Oh yeah, I pulled. Well, that. that's appropriate, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yes, this is about uh, progressing to a common goal uh, and um, synchronicity, and uh, yeah, yeah, I pulled that one. Interesting. I don't have a specific number. I don't think. Um, I might just Let's not be. I must not. I might just not die be or something. <laughs> So today's topic was what? Oh, today's topic is Bloom's Taxonomy. Bloom's Taxonomy. Yeah. I already love it. I know. I know. I thought that the, it would be I a crowd pleaser because of the word taxonomy. <laughs> yeah, this is on the tip of my head. It's not on mine. I mean, I know what a taxonomy yeah, is. And I'm guessing that Bloom is a person. Uh, given that it is, you know, that person's taxonomy. I'm not going to say his. Uh, I I would sort of make a generalized assumption that if there's a thing named after a person, probably that person is male, but I don't want to be exclusive because <laughs> uh, it's not necessarily the case all the time. But in history, I mean, history tends to be written by uh, old white men. So that's a thing. Uh, so I would assume, <laughs> yeah, I would assume that Bloom is male, uh, and that, uh, um, yeah, that it's uh, that it's his taxonomy. I don't, I don't know. The taxonomy of of taxonomy is a grouping of things, so it's his way of sorting uh, the world. I, I think that, that would be. I, I think that would be the best topic. Is if I just brought fourth it'd be like calling something like gary's taxonomy and it's just like that's just how gary organizes the things in his life <laughs> in particular and like wants like piles <laughs> other people to adopt it piles of jello clearly. yeah yeah put it on the orange stack if it's kind of <laughs> urgent the yellow stack if it's not urgent at all the green stack if you should go ahead and that comes from was that the office i think is it like, Green, yeah, green. I think that Michael Scott organized his Rolodex that way. Like, go ahead and skip this topic to make it green. <laughs> like, red, this is a hot topic you should talk about. <laughs> it's great. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, totally irrational color coding or inverted color coding. I don't know. That'd be a fun conversation is how do we end up with these color codes that, like, we all know green, yellow, and red anyway. Have like, well, you, th you think you know until you realize you're colorblind. Well, I was going to make that point. So, like, my, my colorblind brother in law, you know, like, I, I never think about it. He's right at the top or the bottom of the uh, like stoplight. It's the top. Pretty, pretty confident enough. But, I mean, like, I don't know. Like, if they installed one upside down, like, it probably wouldn't affect me. I'd still see the correct colors and go. But would he? Um, Bloom's taxonomy, I think, is related to plants. Uh, <laughs> it's not the taxonomy of blooming things. It could be, though. Um, I'm glad that landed it. <laughs> really happy about that. I, but I, in all seriousness, I do think that it, it has to do with plants. I think it, uh, I, I think it's wrong, though. I feel like I know what this is. Goodness. I think and, and that's why I can't like make up answers because I feel like I'm gonna end up like walking down a path and forgetting what I knew. Yeah. But, well, I don't know apparently, so it doesn't <laughs> forgetting you what know you know anything, so it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. yeah, you don't know. It. Uh, I think Man. I think Bloom's taxonomy is is a way to group uh, appliances. So like refrigerators. <laughs> <laughs> Were you big fans of Mitch Hedberg and, and stoves over here? And and you know over here is dishwashers, yeah. No, not a Mitch Hedberg. Does an appliance have to have an electrical source? No, no. Like a hand crank ice cream maker is still an appliance, right? Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Going <laughs> a bit more old, I was going a little bit more old school, not thinking of like uh, wood stoves and things. And okay. Mitch Hedberg had this thing where he talked about like it'd be great to have the job where you name appliances, like it's the microwave. Because it microwaves, right? <laughs> but then you talked about things like the toaster toasts. 
He's like, how did the refrigerator not get called the colder? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to remember what else. he had. He was a funny dude. I don't know. If you... The colder. Right. Yeah. Because there are some it, other ones that were probably better. Refrigerates. Than yeah, that might not be the one he talked about. Maybe he talked about something else, and I don't remember it correctly. Just like Bloom's taxonomy has nothing to do with plants. I the was the one he had the bit about how rice is great when you want to eat a thousand of something. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. In that same that seg same segment, someone was like, uh, he said, my friend asked me if I wanted a frozen banana, but I didn't want a frozen banana now. I want a regular one later. So I said, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, delivery is just what makes everything so good. It's just, it's, oh, it's so good. This delivery was what made things so good. As, as opposed to our delivery, which makes everything are worse than it actually is. <laughs> no, I don't think it's the case at all. I, for, for quite a while, I was really into stand-up comedy, not like, I mean, because it was funny, but also because I was really curious about like why, like why, why was delivery so important, right? Like Mitch Hedberg's gig was, like if you just said that, like if my friend said, do you want a frozen banana now? And I said, and I thought, no, but I want a regular, regular one later. So I said, yes, like that's, there's not a lot of humor in that. But like the delivery and the timing makes a big difference. So then I was reading on like, like functionally, like, you know, what happens in the brain with humor a little bit. And um, there's just like great research out there. So I'm going to encapsulate and entirely botch it. You should read the research instead. But like what it came down to was um, it is um, the result of like firing unexpected synapses like that are, aren't, aren't related in your brain. And that's why we find it humorous. Um, so then I was thinking about like, well, how does that play out with timing? Like, and I think the answer with timing is that because we are smart and we're expecting like a punchline, mm. that when the punchline comes and it's just, the punchline is that you already knew the punchline because of the timing. Like that's, like when you talk about that, like I thought, I don't want a frozen banana now, but I want a regular one later. That's the punchline. So I said, yeah, like that timing, like you're like, so I said like, oh, here comes the punchline punchline is just yeah it, no you already knew the punchline it was it, yeah it's really fascinating to think about why that's funny now that i've beaten it to death and it's no longer funny though <laughs> you can't help that uh no it's pretty much what i do <laughs> think, thinking about thinking about um uh, the way um what you're saying about um firing synapses that that don't necessarily connect to each other maybe you think of uh eddie izzard um mm -hmm. Because he also he often makes like sort of like weird links between like often opposing yeah. like like cake or death, uh, tea and cake or death. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the revolution. Would you like cake or death? Yeah. He's really interesting. I saw him do because he does like multilingual comedy, mm -hmm. like as an additional challenge. And I saw an interview with him. In I, I watched. I, I watched a. a a show of him doing a doing a gig in France, um, and speaking French at least some of the time, and I have no idea what he's saying. Yeah. And I and then I'm like wondering as I'm watching this, like how how the language difference from an English person speaking in a language that is not their native language, how does that change? The so that's the timing and the delivery. So that's interesting. Did you find it like you you clearly knew when the joke was delivered? Yeah. Like as like when the punchline landed, whatever the punchline was. Yeah, because he's he's pretty because the way that he delivers things. I mean, you can you know how to how to sort of watch for. Would anything. you? I wonder if that would still be the case had you not known him first in English. Right. Like if you only exposed him in French. And there was no laugh track. Like, would you know when the punchline hit? And would you inherently find it humorous having no idea what was said? And I think the answer is like, you wouldn't find it as humorous, but you would still find like, humor in it in some way. Like there's... Yeah, because he does, you know, like facial expressions. Yeah. And, yeah. But his thing was that he was like, it's not a one-to-one -one translation. You have to figure out how to navigate this the rhythm of this different thing in a way that will still impact the audience and that's why he was was choosing to do it he said because it was like an added challenge not to say that he's he was like so able to make people laugh in english all the time but it was just a way no, of getting, this is too easy i need to <laughs> yeah I'm, 
do it in a language I know. And then next I'll do it in a language I don't know and see what happens. <laughs> no, I mean, it's I, like, I, I'm, like, I think to your point, like you have to know the language to, to, to create that weird, like, that unexpectedness. Time. Yeah. Not yeah, just like ordering like, a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or where is the bathroom? Or I need beer. <laughs> like the, you know, the standards. <laughs> <laughs> I need beer. I need beer. Well, in so many, so often in languages, like if you can say "I need," like you can put whatever <laughs> you need in the end, and even though it's like an infantile way to say whatever it is, like they understand. Like this dumb American doesn't speak my language, <laughs> but I can still help them. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um. Speaking of languages, did you watch the debate last night? I did no. not. I did not watch mm. the debate. I was. I didn't realize that it was happening last night uh, until uh, late last night. <laughs> oh, we we split a bottle of wine and watched it. Yeah, how Another was one it? tonight? That was pretty good. Um, I heard Elizabeth was, Warren did well. I thought so. Um, uh, I was. Um, oh, I can't remember her name from Hawaii. Um, that's the problem. That's the problem. Yeah. It, it there absolutely is. People. There's 47 There's... people that qualify. Oh my I don't goodness. think it's 47. I think it's 25. But still, like 10 were on stage last night and 10 will be on stage tonight. I think that's the number. So, yeah. But yeah. I mean, it happens several times where I'm like, wait, who is this? Yeah. That's, there, then we that's... started giving them nicknames like Crazy Eyes and <laughs> like, like the other bald guy and <laughs> So, so, so that's not going to help. Until... Samantha B did a did a segment last week, um, sort of about the upcoming debate, and basically her whole thing was, run for freaking Senate, because it doesn't matter if we if we yeah. win the presidency, and the Senate is still controlled by stupid white Republican assholes. But but none none of this precludes any of these folks from running. For, I think this field's going to be cut down pretty quickly. I hope you know? so. I ho I was hoping it'd be cut down before the debate started, so that we only had like a reasonable number of people debating, not twenty, not like. <sighs> um, I was going to say about language though that there were quite a few folks that um addressed the audience, and it was I guess it was uh, broadcast on uh, Telemundo as well. So quite a few answers that were completely in Spanish, which was nice. I hope Elizabeth. I can tell where the punchline was. I hope Elizabeth Warren did not break out her Spanish. Uh, she did not. That's good. No. Because no. the I thing that, that she the she thing that I missed she, it, but I don't think the so. Thing that she needs not at all is appropriating yet another culture. That's fair. <laughs> that's a really that's a really valid point. And and um, we were discussing like, um, well, that guy interrupts a lot. And then we were discussing like, well, that's like the strategy how much just i mean the problem with debates is that so much of it is just like the strategy coming in like oh you need to make a name for yourself so interrupt a lot like well that makes you, was the that guy at the left end yeah then that makes you look look like an asshole I uh, that was my takeaway that guy's an asshole until the end when they ask what uh, he's a uh, former something it does, it does win you points tactically though i mean that's how that's how trump yes. won debates is by saying wrong like in the middle of, of, of Hillary Clinton talking. Like, no, no, no. I found it somewhat striking too that, that there was a, um, and I don't know if this will maintain when we get to the real debates, um, but there was a very marked uh, difference in the way female candidates um, approached like aggression in general. And I'm sure that was a result of, of like studying how Hillary fared, um, mm. which I mean, it was, it was more notable for a lot of reasons and like very little of what people said. <laughs> so the problem is we don't have um, a great way like Bloom's taxonomy to like categorize them. <laughs> uh, it's ranked choice voting. The winners versus Bloom's the taxonomy. losers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it would be better as a reality show and we could vote people off during the debate. There we go. Yeah. Anything that, that got people voting. That should just be that should just be the uh, the presidential elections period, like like just the entire election 
process is just a reality. <laughs> you are the weakest link. We've already we've already gotten halfway there by electing a reality show host as president. We We're might have go all the way and like yeah. the reality shows. The reality uh, show starts two years before the actual election, and then it's just like, it, <laughs> isn't that pretty much like, what the long like, Democrats in one like, house? I don't feel like. <laughs> I mean, it's, I feel like it's there. I mean, they're, they're in one country. I mean, that's it, you know, one country, you know, 27 networks. I mean, Call in 47 candidates. For who gets to, who get, has to leave the house in this year's democratic primary. <laughs> and then, and then of course the, the primary election would be, um, would be like, so, so the Democrats should have their, their house and then the Republicans should have their house. And then, and then uh, when they've narrowed down to their single candidate, then, then the, the presidential candidates would need to live in a house and, and do yeah. out. Here's the other thing, though. I think 47 is probably okay because it's 2019. You know? I mean, like, we're only halfway through 2019. The election's November of 2020. We need to get that number down before 2020 starts, but... I feel like that's yeah. More there's there's there realistically there are have. people that should have been there last I night. I feel like there's that's more than there have been in the past, and that number like should be like, I mean, if it's ten now, it would be still kind of a lot. And like, I'm all for choice, I, but like, there's also like I, yeah. analysis paralysis, and like, there's just too many options. And I think that that's the yeah. that's something that's that's affecting voters and affecting the party and affecting people who uh, are not planning on voting for Trump uh, in 2020 because like there is no one that we can say yeah that person I like I agree with that person like I'm definitely with them like when Obama ran in that year that he ran um, <laughs> like he was a clear standout for me anyway oh, yeah. like like yeah that's oh, that's boy. that's someone that I can vote for that's someone who who has who has my vote like knowing nothing about like like you there should be some amount of written name recognition like elizabeth warren you know who he is he whoa i just misgendered <laughs> you know who she is joe biden you know because of of being vice president and also grabbing people a lot um yeah. and i i think that name recognition is the reason why people voted for donald trump because they knew who he was and they that's and then even even like interviewing like why did you vote for donald trump well i knew what to expect and they expected him to be an asshole. That's who he is. Okay, well, we're electing assholes now just because of name recognition. And with that, I thought I liked Joe Biden, but <laughs> if any asshole can do it, this asshole can. <laughs> yeah, but don't run in 2020, Gary. Which should I do 2021 or? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Run well, in 2021. Yeah. Yeah. There's too, there's too many there's too many candidates unless you're gonna run as an independent you can run as an independent in 2020 yeah you can run as an independent in 2020 um for quite a while i was a member of an independent party in florida um that like came into existence um when data was running and then like it just kind of still exists but does nothing is so that, I was, that's not the natural law party is it no it is the ecology for ecology party of florida ecology party Huh. Yes. Yeah, it was. Huh. I mean, I think like the numbers out there, there were like dozens of us registered in my county, <laughs> <laughs> and probably many of them is just never updated, right? So, like, yeah, I, 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 I came to them um, not very long ago. <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah. I when I first registered to vote, um, I looked at all the different like party descriptions and whatever, and I was like. And I and I registered uh, as natural law, um, which I don't know if the natural law. I mean, it, it's another one of those like, yeah, they kind of exist, but it's like point oh five percent of the vote yep. thing, and they don't. I, they um, definitely do not exist in Utah. So Florida's <laughs> a closed primary. So for the primary, I need to be registered, but then like general, I need to switch so that I'm registered as third party so the statistics increase as far as third party representation at the polls. Hmm. Doesn't impact anything else I vote there. So that's that's my strategy going forward is to register as uh, some weird party for the general. 
I think I'm registered. I, I, I think I'm registered uh, as a independent currently um, because natural law doesn't exist and Green Party doesn't really exist in Utah either, um, which would be the two things that I would register for. But Democratic, the Democratic primary is open in Utah, so we get those anyway. Are, is are all? I mean, is the Republican primary open as well, or is it? I mean, no. is you have one primary and Republican you is, Republican is closed. That's interesting. In Florida, yeah. it's it it's like, yeah, it's they're both closed, and I, I think it's it's law. But I that, think it I think it's because the Democrats are so few in the state because it's a red state that like they need all the help they can get, so they leave it open, and the Republicans are like, yeah, no. <laughs> What's the value in that having an open primary? I, I think the idea is is numbers. Like you get, you, if you make it easier for people to vote, then you, you know, get your. But the primary count should not. Yeah. yeah, the general certainly does. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, this whole system's fucked up. Yeah. Yes. I'm still and still in favor of of uh, voting reform where we do first choice, second choice, third choice. Yeah. Especially with something yeah. like like. 20 40 80 candidates for for your primary give me give me what's interesting is there were a lot last night i'm like oh that would be a great individual on the vp slot so i had that reaction a lot more than i thought presidential last night but i also don't think that needs to happen last night like that needs to happen during presidential debates not so Bloom's taxonomy is a ta is a way to uh, group uh, presidential hopefuls. Is that it? It'd be great if it was. It would make like the last conversation pertinent to the topic. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was <laughs> trying to bring it around. I was trying to yeah. bring it home as we got our as I, we to, to the last 10 minutes. In all sincerity, I do believe it has something to do with uh, plants. And you I don't see, think You've that, said that about five times, so it's going to be really funny when it's not. <laughs> I know. What is it? I'm still going to be like, oh, I knew what that was. <laughs> um, so it's named after someone called Dr. Benjamin Bloom. I was a white male. I believe so. <laughs> um, and it's a classification of learning objectives that for, for educators that you set for students. So it divides oh. into cognitive, affective, and psychomotor. I was a um, education major for a semester. That's why you knew what it was. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you failed that test, and that's why you didn't finish college. That was the uh, second semester that you didn't go to. You only were in that one. Plum. I mean, that's that's accurate. That was like my <laughs> like second chance at at college. For one semester. Yeah, this has come up for me like two to three times in the past few weeks about being like, well, you know, in Bloom's taxonomy and just me being like, mm. uh -huh. of course I do that. <laughs> That's interesting. But yeah, different learning styles, basically. So take that and go forth with your homeschooling, unschooling. Flowering. So it's basically the stuff that you're applying anyway. It's just like a fancy word for it. <laughs> Because <laughs> that's what the world needs is more fancy words for things we're already fancy doing. words for simple things. <laughs> I mean, that's what I want to be known that's for. That's what the show's built on. <laughs> it used a lot of fancy words. <laughs> so I, I, I definitely want to give a shout out to uh, um, what was that show that you see? now I now I'm the office. No, not that one. No, the one that Allison uh, shared with us yesterday. Oh. I, I watched it, uh, I watched them yesterday, um, Under a oh, Rock. Oh, Under a Rock. Yeah. I definitely want to give, I would definitely want to give a sh shout out to Under a Rock with, with Tig Notaro. I, it definitely has a corollary with this show. Um, <laughs> for those of, of our listeners uh, and possibly uh, the people on this uh, call uh, who don't know, uh, Under a Rock by Tig, uh, with Tig Notaro um, she is uh, someone who does not uh, follow pop culture, doesn't watch a lot of movies or TV shows, and so she hosts famous people on her show and doesn't know who they are. Um, and then th over the course of, of the show, kind of sort of tries to guess who they are, like what their name is and what they're famous for. 
um, and and it's really really awkward, uh, very much like the show. Um, she doesn't know what you're talking about, very much like the show. But it's also um, the interesting, the thing that I found interesting about it, and the thing that I, I like about it is because it 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 sort of forces like actual like real conversations and real personalities to happen with these people who go on the talk shows and typically they're like, Oh, what's your project uh, that you're working on? Like, tell me about the next movie that you're working on or like, what was it like to work with Prince or like, you know, nothing that's really about them as a person. Whereas this is like a conversation between two individuals, which is really interesting. And and they're like, and there's no like sort of like, uh, you know, stars in, in the interviewer's eyes or anything. They're not trying to like make this person out to be some some huge like mega star. It's just like, oh, you're a person. I'm a person. We're people. Like we're just having a conversation. I'm trying to figure out who you are, but I have no idea who you are because why would I? Because we don't know each other. Like, <laughs> of course, I don't know who you are. I think I also enjoy the component of like the person being interviewed who she doesn't know who they are, what they're famous for. It, it was almost like an amusement of like, it's like an unfamiliarity of not being recognized. Yeah. yeah. And so like, th there was like a novelty in that to them of just especially, being like pleasant. Especially with James Vanderbeek. James Vanderbeek was like cracking up that she didn't know who he was like the entire time. Like really? Like this, like he showed, he, so they give her clues. Um, and uh, to like guess what they're famous for. And so he gave her a clue of, of da like the creek in Dawson's Creek. He like gave her a picture of that. And, she, and she's like, and she's looking at it. He's like, a river. And he's like, no, <laughs> swallow this river. Uh, a stream, uh, no, it's, uh, it's less, less rapid than a stream, a, a creek. Yeah, it's a creek. And she's like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> So I need to watch that. I did, I saw that yesterday and then like opened the tab and left it there. It's good. It's good. There's only <laughs> four episodes. <laughs> there are only four episodes, um, and they're less than ten minutes. So it's 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 a very short time suck. Um, <laughs> but but yeah, it's 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 definitely recommended. I I it thumbs up from this part of binary jazz. <laughs> Two out of three thumbs for binary two, jazz. Two out of third, three thumbs. Third thumb to be determined. <laughs> I'll give a provisional thumbs up because the description sounds fantastic. I just can't speak to it yet because I'm not knowledgeable of it. Oh, wait, what's, how has that stopped me before? <laughs> That's the entire point of the show. Yeah. Uh, mm. Do we have any listener questions or do we just have Allison questions? We just have Allison questions. Okay. Uh, not that that's a, a, a less than, but. Yeah, no, it's not at all. Um, which direction does it go? Okay, that one's older. Uh, if you could be any member of a TV sitcom family, which one would you choose? Oh. Huh. I don't know. I think I think if if if, if the Cosby show comes is is mentioned, <laughs> like the Huxtables, uh, we probably should just end the end the entire podcast. <laughs> That's a fair point. Yeah, I was trying to think like what TV families do I know? That's one that I know. Yeah. 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 I am um, passingly aware of Bill Cosby. <laughs> I think I, I feel like I would go between the Growing Pains family and yeah. Family Ties. I think I wanted. I think I wanted to be in those families growing up. Yeah, uh, I want to be an elf. Okay, that's fair. There's also um, there's also the family in the in uh, the dinosaurs TV show. Uh, I don't know <laughs> that I'd want to be in that family. Oh man, being a dinosaur would be cool. <laughs> I'm the baby guy. I love me. I'm mama. I totally forgot about that show. I tried watching it not too long ago. Um, I don't know that I don't know the age as well. <laughs> um, it, it is that didn't. because is that because of the um, the correlation that was made uh, during during the Trump ca Trump campaign uh, between Trump and the the angry boss? Is that why you watched it? I don't know if that's what brought it to like my like awareness again or not, but I. I'm not sure. It was about that time, so that probably was. I ran into it somewhere in media and went, oh, I wonder how that show is these days, and watched it and was like, eh. <laughs> I I recently... Um, they did some interesting things in that show. Yeah. Like, looking at the episodes. I mean, they're... But, eh. I, I recently... Um, so I used a GIF recently um, of Max Hedrum to indicate, like, 
um, somebody sort of like not stuttering, but like um, like a repeated like technical glitch, um, yes. and then um, and then I was like, wow. but why do I know who Max Headroom is? Like, what is the story of Max? So then I did it. I went. I went to. Uh, I did a went down a rabbit hole of like Max Headroom lore and like. Um, wow. There's a whole TV show that I don't think I was even aware of because I think I only saw him like on MTV. But there's a movie about him. There's a whole backstory about how, like, he's an artificial intelligence that came out of like the the thoughts and memories of a journalist who died, and like then he was uploaded into this Max Headroom like talk show forum. Um, there's all sorts of like and and it was a it was an it was on British TV and it was like deliberately picking somebody with a, with like an American like. Um, accent for the purpose of like being like a, a smarmy kind of like TV guy. Um, yeah, it it's interesting because really... Max Headroom made it into my consciousness recently as well. So it's <laughs> yeah, it's it's and it's one of those things that I don't think ages well, and I don't think that like I mean, kids t kids today aren't going to know who Max Headroom is. Um, that was the situation. Yeah, a kid like I don't know. Five years younger than me. <laughs> Something. Oh, probably long, probably more than that. Kids today. Kids today. Yeah. Hmm. Uh oh. I think did he make a did he make a cameo on on RoboCop too? I mean, he uses this all over the place for like. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at @binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.